everyone welcome back to another amazing tutorial in today's video we'll be making this amazing book page flip animation in adobe xt itself this will take us less than 10 minutes and it looks super good and super smooth without further ado let's just get started with this video so the first step is obviously to create a adobe xt document a blank document will work and i want you guys to create a simple artboard iPhone 10 is the kind of artboard that I'm going for. You can go for any artboard depending on the size of your phone or depending on the size of your web page. The next step is to actually create a base for all the books to be displayed. And in this case, I'm going to create a rectangle which kind of folds up, I'd say two thirds of this, a little, a little more actually. And that's about it. I'll remove the border and I'll give this a white color. I think that is fine and the border radius on the top left and the top right should be around 24 pixels. So 24, 24, make sure you've selected this dotted radius so that you can select multiple radiuses. Click on the artboard and then give this artboard a slightly grayed out background. You can make it a bluish gray background as well, which I kind of prefer in a lot of situations like this one, but I think this looks really, really good. You can, you can obviously place a logo or a burger menu or anything like that on this page here. But for now, I'm just leaving it just like that. For the books, I will just make a quick rectangle like this. It doesn't have to be a specific size for this one. We're not going to specific. The border radius, however, should be around 24 pixels matching the outer rectangle right here. Obviously, I'll remove the border for this and I will copy over any images like this one. This is the cover for the design of everyday things. You can have any magazine or image right here. I'll just duplicate this and make it slightly smaller, uh, maybe slightly larger than this. Yeah, I think this is perfect and place it towards the right and behind this, just like that, so that we have a carousel-like experience. Of course, I will also reduce the opacity of this around 80. 80% so that you have more focus here and less focus here. And I'm just going to place it for the sake of it right now. But you can, of course, change the images or the covers later on. To create a 3D effect for the book, I can always click on the pen tool by clicking on P on the keyboard and just wrapping around this one, two and three points on the top. And what will this and what this will do is I'm going to change the border color to white and give the border size of about 12. Okay, that's a little too much, maybe maybe eight. That's good. I'm gonna change the background blur, I'm gonna activate the blur, and I'm gonna change the background blur to object blur. I'm gonna decrease the border blur to around seven or eight. I think this is fine. Maybe reduce the opacity a little bit, just for the sake. Now that you, now you can see there's this glossy effect. I'll duplicate this, and I'm gonna rotate it. Duplication is easy, just hold Option or Alt on your keyboard and drag out something that will duplicate. And of course, now we have two glossy effects. One effect on the bottom right here, I will change this to a black or a really dark gray so that this is more of like a pneumorphic effect in this case, but it gives that 3D vibe to it. And that's about it for the entire interface. I'm gonna click on this artboard and say Command D or Control D to duplicate the artboard. And what I'm going to do in this artboard itself, first of all, I will remove these two shadowed borders here. Just reduce the opacity to zero or just delete them altogether, whatever you like. And I'm also going to expand this by I'm just going to hold shift. And after I've selected this, if I drag out the bottom anchor point down below, as you can see, it scales down like this and it looks really good. Also to give it more depth and to give it more focus on top, I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce a dark background and I will reduce the opacity of this background to around 70%. 70% is good enough for me in this case. And I'm gonna make sure that this rectangle, this dark background is below this book cover. As you can see, this book cover is this weird name here. Once you've added all of these cool elements, you can then start with the actual flip animation. Now be careful and follow along to have the best result possible. If I click on this artboard, I will duplicate it. And in this case, I can go ahead and remove everything on screen. I don't need everything here. And I will introduce a rectangle. If I, I'll just drag the rectangle out like this, make sure to remove the border. I like it clean like that. 
Now if you're doing it on an iPhone or a phone screen like this, I want you guys to give this white rectangle a certain specific dimensions. The width should be around 720 pixels and the height should be around 754. I know this is a very weird number, but I've actually tested it out and calculated it so that we have the best results possible. I'll then go ahead and place it halfway to the left, almost halfway to the left, so that we have around uh, 16 to 20 pixels difference from the right. The same goes for the top and the bottom. Now comes the part where you have to really follow along. So if I click on this rectangle, I will go to the plugins panel at the bottom left here. There's this plugins button on in Adobe XD. And I'll go to this plus icon on the top right. And I will search for a plugin called Anima. Anima is a free plugin that you can download. As you can see, if I search for Anima, it will display the Anima plugin for me. Once you have installed this Anima plugin, go back, make sure that this rectangle is selected and click on Anima in the plugins panel on the left. Now, while the rectangle is selected, click on embed code. Now, as you can see, there is this window that pops up. We don't really need to fiddle around with any of these values right now. Now, there is a library called turn.js, which allows us to create these amazing paper turn effect. Of course, you don't have to have any knowledge of coding. This is strictly to show you what I'm using. Now, for your convenience, I've created a Google Doc. Now, this Google Doc is of 45 pages just below this JS text here. There's a script tag which starts. So just start highlighting and just highlight maybe one or two lines. Then use the scroll bar to go to the bottom, which is the 45th page. Hold shift and click on the last line like this. As you can see, everything has been copied over. Then go ahead and say Command C or Control C on Windows. Go back to XT. And this in this embed code window, make sure that selected layer is selected and then go ahead and say command V or control V to just paste it. Of course, our task is not over yet. Now, as you can see, this has a width of 720 and height of 780. You can adjust the size of the pages by adjusting the size right here and go ahead and save this so that we don't lose any of our progress. Now, in this very document that I'm sharing in the description, there is this HTML tag right here. Below this HTML title, copy everything here. Now, div ID magazine is the container. It's like a component. Under that, you will have all these pages. So each div inside this main div will constitute one page. It's very simple to understand. For now, it's just simple copy paste. Copy all the code right here and go back to XT and, and go to embed code. There'll be an edit button here now. And if I go back and I need to go to the bottom of this very page. So what I'll do is I'll drag like this on my mouse and I'll drag till the very bottom. It might take half a second to scroll to the bottom because it's long code. We really can't do anything about it. At the bottom where the script tag ends like this, if I press enter or return, I will just paste that very text right here. I have also added this style function at the bottom right here. I've also added this style tag with all the styling that is required. Now, a lot of this is important. To, so make sure from the document given in the description, go ahead and copy this style as well. I have everything in that document and go ahead and save this for one last time. And that's about it. That is done. If you want to add more pages to your document or to this to this book, you can always go ahead and add more of these divs, as you can see. Now, now the last step is to actually prototype the entire thing. I'll go to prototype. I'll click on this book cover right here. I'll drag this arrow to the second artboard. Make sure tap is on. Auto animate is on the trigger. Destination is of course this, this artboard right here ease in out for me and 0.4 seconds is also okay. So one thing we'll dif do different with this artboard is I'll click on this book cover right here. I'll go back to the Anima plugin on the left here and I'll click on link. So I want to link this to this last page right here. So in this case, what I will do is go to this last page right here and I'll say preview in browser. 
as you can see the effect will be live right here i can drag to flip the page but in this case i will copy this little link on the top here and say command c or control c i'll go back i'll go to this second artboard right here and under external link i'll say command v or control v to copy that link right here now in this case now to test it out all you need to do is click on the first artboard and say preview in browser and it will show you something very similar to this. And there you have it, a very nice book flip effect. Let me quickly call Saptarshi and let's see how he reacts to this design that we replicated from his original. Hey everyone, Sapta here. Puneet has asked me to check out the book flipping animation that he has replicated in Adobe XD. So let me see how it looks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, it's happening. Okay, awesome. So I checked out. It looks nice. It's really hard to believe that a design tool, which is primarily used for designing and a bit of prototyping, can be used to create something as complicated as a book flipping. Kudos to Puneet and kudos to Adobe for creating such a tool. But here are my two cents. I feel tweaking the shadows to a certain bit would bring a lot more life into the animation, would make it look a little more realistic. And the second thing that I see there is the frame rate. I would obviously want a slightly higher frame rate, which would give it a more real app-like feel so that the animations are really smooth. But that's a limitation of Adobe XD. You cannot increase the frame rate, something that you can do in a tool like After Effects. But the fact that the same thing could be done using a much simpler tool in a much shorter time is commendable. So if you try that out, let me know what you feel about it.